Hi, I'm Dr. Vincent Ho. I'm a gastroenterologist and a senior university lecturer. I'm also the gut doctor. Have you ever wondered why you get heartburn or why you feel a bit of food coming back up into the mouth shortly after you eat? Today, we have a great animation covering acid reflux. Hope you enjoy. The story of reflux disease is an interesting one. We know that gastroesophageal reflux disease is a chronic relapsing condition in which the reflux of stomach content into the esophagus and beyond can provoke symptoms and complications. There are multiple mechanisms that contribute to the development of gastroesophageal reflux disease. In order to better understand these mechanisms, let's first talk about what happens with digestion. The esophagus is a long muscular tube that carries food from the mouth to the stomach. The worm-like contractions called peristalsis push food down the esophagus. At the bottom of the esophagus, food passes through a muscular valve called the lower esophageal sphincter and then passes into the stomach. The digestive juices secreted by the stomach are highly acidic and when the stomach contracts to move food into the small intestine, the lower esophageal sphincter shuts tightly in order to prevent these acidic juices from moving back into the esophagus where it can lead to damage. A large muscle responsible for helping us breathe called the diaphragm separates the chest from the abdomen. To reach the stomach, the esophagus passes through the diaphragm at a point called the diaphragmatic hiatus. If the resting tone of the lower esophageal sphincter is lowered because of diseases such as scleroderma, where there is fibrosis of the lower esophageal sphincter, then the valve can't close properly, and that means stomach acidic contents can very easily reflux back into the esophagus. If esophageal peristalsis is weak, then this means that the ability of the esophagus to clear acid is impaired. And this means acid hangs around longer in the esophagus and therefore is more likely to result in damage to the esophageal lining. The most common mechanism for reflux for most people is transient relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. This allows for gastric contents to flow back up the esophagus. Anatomical factors such as a hiatus hernia play a role in contributing to reflux. If you have a hiatus hernia, a portion of your stomach is protruding into your chest cavity through the opening in your diaphragm. A hiatus hernia can increase the risk and severity of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Some patients with reflux symptoms may experience hypersensitivity to pain in the absence of excessive esophageal acid exposure. This is called visceral hypersensitivity. The exact mechanism for this is unclear, but it's thought that there is altered processing by the brain of nerve signals coming from the esophagus. Finally, we know that the ability of the esophageal lining or mucosa to withstand injury is really important in the development of gastroesophageal reflux disease. The cells that line the esophagus try to keep acid out by having tight junctions between cells and also having a way to neutralize any acid that diffuses back into the mucosa. One of the first things that can happen if reflux acid overwhelms the defenses of the mucus lining is that it can damage the junctions between cells and acid can get into those spaces between cells leading to further damage. The acid exposure can damage the esophageal wall and cause erosions. The esophagus may scar and narrow, resulting in strictures. In some patients with chronic reflux, the cells that line the esophageal wall are transformed, resulting in a precancerous condition called Barrett's esophagus. I hope you've enjoyed the animation. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to learn more about the gut and check out our social media links down below. You'll find a lot of useful content on my website, gutdoctor.com, and I'll be producing new videos regularly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.